Hello snowboarders of the internet, I'm TC and today we're going to be reviewing the Telos DST. This board has Telos's dual camber with tip rockers so that means you're going to have camber right under your foot with a little bit of a flatter spot and then flatter spots on the outside with a little bit of kick on the rocker on the tip and the tail. So that allows you to still have that full camber underfoot with easy turn ability with the rocker on the tip and tail and a little bit more maneuverable camber underneath your foot since you do have that flat spot. This board comes in a 154, 158, and 162. I rode this board at Copper Mountain where it was slightly breezy, beautiful sunny day all day, slightly warmer than your average temps with fresh snow that all ended up blowing to one side of the mountain. I used my Ride Fuse boots and Jones Mercury bindings. The flex on this board is a little bit stiffer than the middle of the road, I'll say. Uh, at the tip and tail, however, it is gonna be very soft compared to in between your feet. And then it also has those urethane sidewalls, which do help with stability when you're going over chunder, all of that, you don't feel a lot of it. At higher speeds, I did notice that nose kind of chundering and chattering on me a little bit more than I would say is average. When you're popping an ollie on this, it is a very exaggerated motion where you're really leaning into it to get that reaction right back to your feet. That being said, it isn't gonna have the most snap to it just because of that extended rocker zone, but it does ollie fairly well. Feels a little bit washy just because of that extra camber zone on takeoffs and landings. So this board is very butterable. You do have that extended rocker on the tip and on the tail, which allow you to really have good lock-in points with it. The one downside I say is it won't pop you out necessarily to the moon, but you'll have a little bit of snap on the exit of that butter. But you do have a really good extended rocker zone to lock it in with. When it comes to carving, this board is fairly nimble edge to edge. That flat zone in between your feet allows the camber to turn over a little bit easier mixed with that longer rocker on the nose and tail. Medium carves, it holds up fairly well. I did have some problems with high speed and Euro carves where it didn't hold an edge well and it chattered out a little bit more than I would have enjoyed. This board is made for somebody that really likes to take free riding an all mountain to the next level without having to take it with too much speed or anything like that. It handles fairly well all mountain and it'll handle any condition that you throw at it. Personally, I thought this board was fairly fun. It definitely excelled for me on buttering and pretty much pressing around on this thing where I'm not gonna take it and charge super hard on it. It's not gonna be my board of choice. But for those cruising days when you just find some fresh snow or anything like that, it's a pretty solid board. The comparable boards would be the Arbor Coda Camber, the Yes Standard, and the Spring Break Powder Twin. My binding recommendations for this board would be a Solomon Hologram, Union Strata, and a Jones Orion. This has been my review of the Telos DST. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you gonna buy one? Let me know in the comment section below. I wanna know what you guys have to say. If you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button, click that bell, turn on those notifications, if you want to support us further, head on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more right now, but we have a video over there that explains it so much further. As always, guys, I'm TC, and we'll see you in the next video.